Because as we look at the fact that you need to see yourself more clearly, you're breaking up with an entire old identity that could look like, you know, a divorce. It could look like uh, separating from someone that no longer serves you. Hello, Capricorn. Kristen Simone Hansen, and welcome to Secret Secrets. Hi Capricorn. So I'm Kristen and I'm a healer. In this video you are going to get a full rundown of the month of June and how it's going to affect you and your Capricorn placements. I begin with astrology and I end with a card reading. If at any point in this video you feel connected to me and like our energies resonate, you can join my client circle and that link can be found here and also in the bio. We welcome you. And last but not least, you guys know I am a global citizen and I love connecting with all of you on a worldly and global level. So if you have not yet, tell me where you're listening from in the comments and we can all connect on a worldly and global level. <laughs> so now with all that being said, Let's get into this. All right, Capricorn. So this is June. And I will say that this energy is feeling very um, light thus far. I have this like hopeful, I don't know. There's something about it that feels like a, like a big transition is going to take place. And this is just emotional, right? So before we get into uh, the astrology and the reading and things like that, this is just kind of a emotionally it feels like a shift you know um i don't know and like doors are going to open so let's let's look at the well i can say that there's going to be a shift here at sea goat secrets because we're getting our new audio system and that it should happen as far as i know it's being delivered around the 16th of june but we will see which is exciting <laughs> so big shift here um and I have been hesitating to record. I don't know if you guys noticed, but subtly, uh, because I, I have been trying to hold back because of that, which is probably not good. Um, but anyway, so let's get into the reflections of May. So May was an interesting month. It was very uh, serendipitous. We saw a lot in terms of pleasure. You guys went through a huge renewal in terms of your identity and who it is that you are. It was like you saw yourself clearly. And uh, a lot of self-compassion was developed during the month of May. Uh, seeing yourself through some of the things that once were, um, like moving through self-gaslighting, right? Like memories that you used to take responsibility for, you kind of realized were not yours. And this definitely saw a shift during the Sagittarius full moon and in terms of finally closing those doors. Um, in the beginning of the month of May, again, a lot of things tied around pleasure, sensuality, big conversations around your money and your wealth. And you guys saw yourself putting out an energy into the universe that said that you wanted more and kind of getting this prelude kind of energy to what a wealthier existence would feel like. And on the other side, there is there was a big shadow and a lot of that had to do with the past. Um, also feeling like you want to close certain doors or end certain chapters. And for some reason, it's almost like as if you're taking a book and, and you want to close, um, you want to close it, but the pages are, are fighting against you, right? Like as if they just won't, like it just won't uh, become shut, right? And um, it gets taken all of your might. And so these, the book is still kind of open, even though it should be closed. And that was the energy that definitely panned out throughout the month of May. And it was causing um, kind of depressive thoughts and imbalances. So here we are into the month of June. And let's dive into how things are going to be broken up in terms of week by week. Uh, so here we are in the month of June. And the difference is when we're here at this time is uh, Gemini energy. So Gemini energy is throughout everything. Whereas in May, we saw a lot going on with Taurus and the last moments of Taurus being in Jupiter and all that was happening in terms of pressurizing that energy in your fifth house and really um, kind of pushing you, pushing you into a state where you really had to visit the fifth house energy and get all you can from it, learn all you could from it. 
before Jupiter left and went into Gemini. So now that Jupiter is in Gemini, we're looking at a lot of serendipity, and I'm going to tie this to the career reading um, about ways in which you can prioritize your financial goals due to this Jupiter shift. So look out for the career reading, especially if you're looking for different things that you can invest in, uh, businesses that you can start, uh, stocks that you can invest in, uh, which industries are going to flourish, pretty much where luck is going to find you while uh, Jupiter is in Gemini. And I'm going to put all of those things into the career reading. Um, but yeah, so this is what's going on for the month of June. We've got the beginning of this energy. So everything's amplifying your sixth house. And your sixth house is saying to you to get more serious about who it is that you are and put yourself in the driver's seat. Uh, getting more serious about your life, your dynamics, the things that you discovered during the Taurian, uh, I guess, huge transit, right? The way in which you were discovering yourself and your wealth and your value and your pleasure points. It's taking all of those things and then adding them in a more practical manner and adding real plans, goals, um, and solutions really uh, tied to this energy. Also getting more serious about your health and how it is that you need to prioritize your health and what it is that you need to do to live a more healthy life, not just in terms of your physical health, but also your mental and emotional, especially because, in, and spiritual as well, but uh, especially because of feeling post-trauma. You guys have been dealing with a lot, a lot of post-trauma from the Pluto transit. And so as we step into the next year in the sixth house, as things begin that shift where uh, the things that you've been waiting on finally come in, more things are working in terms of serendipity to live a healthier energy or to have a healthier lifestyle. These are the things that are going to help you kind of close the book on the past that you've been waiting for happening with the Jupiter um, sixth house and obviously this big turn as everything is in Gemini. All right, so in week one, we've got uh, Jupiter moving into Gemini, as we said, and this is doing a wonderful trend with Pluto. So this brings about, and you guys have already probably been feeling it, a big, big change in energy. The sixth house move, because of Pluto being in Aquarius, it's it's a trine that brings a lot of forward, but also quick movements in terms of your sixth house energy. Obviously, on a global scale, we see it on a different level. And for those of you who are in the inner circle, we're going to get that. Um, but for your personal endeavors, sixth house and second house and how the sixth house relates back to the second house which is in other words how virgo relates back to taurus and this beautiful relationship between the two is what you are going to be going through throughout the next year how you can practicalize the things that increase your self-worth practicalize the things that increase your self-value and lastly your wealth right bringing in again virgo's energy that says what are the plans uh, how do we get critical? How do we get clear-minded? What do we do to bring about the abundance that we feel in the second house in that, you know, second house is Taurus. So I'm saying Virgo and Taurus to relate to the two houses in order to bring about more growth in the second house. So that's why this next year is very pivotal in terms of your plans coming into fruition and you getting more serious. You guys have kind of been feeling this energy as if you are in the driver's seat now, even if you're feeling a little bit like you don't know necessarily what to do or like things are kind of foggy. There's a bit of an emotional uh, weightedness that you've been feeling. That kind of emotional weightedness it makes sense. <laughs> it's a big fog. It's a big um, transition. But this is how you step into the, the sixth house energy to go piece by piece in terms of bringing forth a new reality. We've also got Mercury going into Gemini. We've got the new moon going in Gemini. So this is a part of what adds to this energy, more trining with Pluto. So how are you talking to yourself? How are you talking about yourself? How are you looking at, again, the new moon brings all of these new ideas around this, which says, how can you do more? What are your plans? What does this look like? What does it feel like? You're aware of your self-worth. You're aware of what it is that you want to see in your value systems and the kind of wealth that you want to have in your life. But what are you actually doing to bring it about? And these are where the ideas that you've been desperate to find or this momentum and also this shift in energy. You guys have been kind of waiting for like a like a push in energy to come back and find you. This is where you start to see all of that come about. The slow kind of movement of Taurus has kind of been uh, kind of dragging you down a little bit and then boom you get this big shift 
And so it's good in terms of you being able to get the downloads that you need to see that increase and so that you can uh, implement more plans. Seriousness is a big conversation for you guys um, for the remainder of the year. Uh, the word serious and you being unapologetic about your seriousness because you know that you're uh, you're deserving of it, but then also it's what you need to do in order to do, uh, I guess, in order to implement what it is that you want for the second half. A lot of the serendipity is with you in terms of you uh, understanding the sixth house energy, but the sixth house is still about you doing it yourself, putting a uh, nose to the grindstone, I guess, in that way. So week one is all about going from a sluggish energy to a more energetic energy. We look at week two, we've got Mars moving into Taurus, and we've also got uh, the first quarter moon happening in Virgo. So this is um, kind of a change in the air from what it is that you were dealing with last month, where it was more fire, more fourth house energy amplifying your Mars. Again, we look at this Taurus energy going here in this month, and it's this question of, okay, what are you doing? What are your pleasure points? How are, do you want to feel better? How are you slowing down in order to bring about these new changes and these plans that you want to implement? It's taking slower steps, even though you are being more serious and more practical about how you're bringing forth the reality that you want, but it's doing it in a way that is um, more deliberate, right? Not scarce, not feeling like the ground is gonna fall from underneath you, but really big, heavy movements toward what it is that you want, as if the, like strong pentacle energy, basically, right? Like you know, you know what it is that you're doing and you know what it is that you need to implement. And this energy comes in to help you do that in the second week. It's, it's reevaluating the way you will go about this. Now that you've got this fresh energy, you're doing it with more confidence right? Prioritizing those pleasure points and what that means for you. Also more play and more fun, um, feeling um, like more light and, and better around week two. When we look at week three, we've got Venus entering into Cancer, Mercury goes into Cancer, the Sun goes into Cancer, um, and the full moon happens with you in Capricorn. So week three is big because all of these placements are moving into your opposing energy, which is cancer. Cancer season can be a little bit of a drain for you guys sometimes, usually around the June, July area. Things can happen kind of out of the blue with you guys, especially if you have strong cancer in your top three. This time of the year can bring about some uh, very difficult emotional shifts, or it can bring about really positive emotional shifts. It's all about how you decide to go about it. Uh, but what this energy is asking you to do is look at yourself from the opposite eye. How can you nurture yourself better, nurture your relationships better? And most importantly, how is it that you can look at the way you show up in your life in a more uh, honest and more, um, I guess, almost like a mothering way? Like, how can you be better at mothering yourself? Because we see the story that plays out when it comes to you uh, defining yourself during the month of May and then we go into June and it's like practicalizing what it is that you know about who it is that you are and then as that energy finds you you get these little gifts from the universal plane that says okay but do it slowly do it in a way that is more about uh, worth instead of work right less hard work and more work that has value so doing uh instead of doing a bunch of things it's doing less things and doing it with more intention and then here we go and that's the mars taurus transit and then here we go into cancer that is then asking you to focus on nurturing so you're still working toward what it is that you want uh i would say week three is big for those of you guys in terms of relationships uh major major relationship shifts so new love established love old love can be uh finding itself like um people kind of coming back from the past possibly but week three is a big moment for love because this is asking you to look at the way your relationships show up for you and how you show up for your relationships so that's why you can find old people trying to re-enter your life as kind of a lesson plan does this person deserve the new you when you met them you weren't who it is that you are right now so do they deserve who it is that you are in this moment or is it just an 
ancient history, right? Is it an old story that needs to close? It is, is it a book that no longer can be open? So this is kind of the things that play out uh, during week three and this full moon in your sign is asking you to put kind of a death to the old you, right? How is it that you're closing out your old identity because of all of these things that have taken place, especially between uh, the trauma that was awakened in April the self-worth that came into fruition in May and the practicalization of you needing to get more serious about yourself and who you are now that you know happening in June. And so as we look at this full moon, it's saying, I want to put an end to who I once was. Uh, the identity, the first house saying, this is who I want to be. So all of these old patterns need to end. And all of these old connections that do not serve me, all of these old stories, these old narratives, I'm finally ready to begin anew. And this Cancerian energy is coming and asking you to nurture yourself. And it's also nurturing you as you go through these dynamics, which is quite beautiful. Um, also, the full moon brings in kind of a focus on you as well. So you can find people thinking about you uh, for no reason at all, besides the fact that you are on their mind with this uh, full moon energy, especially also with the opposing energies of cancer. So I would definitely say look out for week three when it comes to relationship dynamics. When we see week four, we've got the last core moon in Aries, and we've also got uh, the Saturn retrograde in Pisces. So this is big because you guys are Capricorn dominant. So wherever you find your Capricorn placements, the Saturn retrograde hits you more than it does other people. Uh, and also Aquarius. Uh, but this is asking you to slow things down, okay? So where we saw week three, different conversations about your relationships, week four is coming in again with Pisces and Saturn asking you to look at your close quarters. So these relationships that you um, kind of came unearthed in week three begin to have deeper conversations in week four. How do they actually serve you? Right? How are they affecting your day-to-day -day dynamics and then relating back to things like how you show up in the world, your status, uh, your career, how can you reevaluate your career relationships or these long term dynamics, and what it is that you need to what is it that you need to do to close certain books when it comes to your close quarters, your home and family dynamics? Who is it that's around you? What do you actually want out of love? And these are the biggest conversations that are playing out at the end of the month. So career is definitely, I can't wait for the career reading, um, but career is definitely a, a, a conversation in terms of all of these things, but this is your personal reading. And your personal dynamics that are playing out is all of this internal uh, stuff, right? This These internal shifts. So there's a lot of... Um, Kind of like a beautiful movement in terms of things going on internally kind of pushing out of you but it's not to say it will be easy there is this um, kind of the lingering shadows of the past finally being able to have those final corners of or i guess crevices of light uh, push them out of their dark corners but with that there is a matter of patience right it's it's um this depressive energy that's kind of carrying you right now, uh, going through an interesting dance through the month of June, and you having to then kind of be in control of it, even if you feel um, like it's not in your control or a little bit tired of it. Uh, so these are the kind of things that play out, and that's why I'm saying when we look at week three, there's a lot of nurturing that comes in, so hold tight and hold steady. June is a big month for you. It's a month of change. It's a month of um, flourishing. It's a month of, of socialization and connection. And you, it's important to allow that to come in. There's a generational change here. There's a lot of um, increase here, but it's you're, you're putting an end to what it is that once was and those patterns of the past. And that is just a process. You know what I mean? It's not to say it's going to be the most seamless thing. And a lot of what you guys are battling is in your emotional body. And it's revving you up for a very emotional cancer season. So it's important during the month of June to do a lot when it comes to taking care of your emotional health. Emotional and spiritual health are the biggest things for you guys during the month of June. And it begins the process of what you're doing for the next year when it comes to this energy. Okay, so... That is your astrology. We're going to get into the reading now. Um, 
what have we've got going on here? So your subject, we've got the Queen of Pentacles with the Tower and the Ten of Wands. And this is accompanied with Coffee Cup and Girl with a Snake. This is so oh, cohesive. Not elusive, but cohesive. It's, it's, it's an interesting storyline here. We've got you looking at your self-worth. The Queen of Pentacles is archetypal Capricorn, right? Uh, when Capricorn is in its most aligned state, right? When it's allowing itself to um, be more uh, nurturing, not only of itself, but others. The true giver in that sense, the builder that creates the home, the city for others. And so this is you kind of in this energy when it comes to yourself, which is no surprise here. You know, we know that June is a month where you're really really, really understanding your self-worth and your self-value. So this is a beautiful space to be in. It feels like the sun. It feels like a lot of nurturing, a lot of self-nurturing, a lot of self-love, a really beautiful energy. And this goes for my divine masculines and feminines, a very beautiful, loving relationship that you're having with yourself, loving on yourself. But this is here with the tower and the ten of wands, which is quite interesting because there's a huge shift going on. <laughs> So there are a lot of changes happening, big breakthroughs, breakdowns happening, and this is what's bringing you to the other side with the Ten of Wands. So interesting. At the, at the center here, and this is obviously the major arcana here, so even though the Queen of Pentacles is leading us when it comes to the subject of how you are feeling, you're going through a lot of big leaps, shifts, and changes. Big towers are taking place. But I can't help but look at this now and the way it aligns with what's going on with what is happening in your um, your your advice, right? In terms of your spiritual advice, we've got seeing the true you and Pandora's gift, which is uh, kind of bringing us back into the space of what does it mean to look within the box of hidden secrets, right? Going within the parts of yourself, seeing that you hold the key to all of these things, these these. I don't know why I keep wanting to say elusive, right? But there's something about it that feels that way, like a relationship you're having with yourself. It's almost like you're discovering yourself in a way where you've been a secret to yourself and you're uncovering that. And you get through this month as you continue to align with who it is that you truly are and see yourself for who it is that you are, right? The governor of this box in that sense. And when we go, wow, and we've got some power, powerful moves going on here when it comes to your healing points these are two of my most powerful cards in that deck and i'm excited to get here but i'll wait until we get to that point but uh the story being told here is quite powerful because it goes back to this queen of pentacles energy and these changes that are happening don't necessarily feel bad especially as we're looking at how they're backed up here because this card mandala of the heart is all about things not going as planned and it's understanding that things fall apart so that they can come back together this is all about uh, aligning with yourself as more of a leader, a person of critical acclaim. I can't help but you guys, uh, there's something about you guys this month that a lot of eyes are going to be on you. A lot of people are looking at you. This radiation of self-worth, self-love, and self-identity is aligning with what it, what it is that you need in that uh, all eyes are on you in that sense, right? It's like, basking whether you guys are in the limelight or whether you're just in the limelight in your personal life the way you're loving on yourself is showing up in others and you continue to heal as you align with that allowing other people to like you want you see you uh, connect with you embrace your energy embrace your light that's how you continue to heal most importantly that's how you see your true self a lot of you are awakening to how great you really are how interesting you are, how in alignment you are. And it's interesting that we here have the, the Pandora's gift side by side, just juxtaposing with Mandala of the heart, which again, things fall apart so they can come back together, right? What is sitting inside that box? What are the secrets that are meant to be unearthed? We go back into the subject, right? We've got the empath narcissist, narcissist paradigm, setting boundaries, enabling boundaries. A lot of you uh, are ending this idea, right? This concept of what it means to be used. What does it mean to have to put yourself in the in certain circumstances and situations socially? I know someone's going to tell me about the audio, <laughs> but I cannot. I I can't separate from this right now. I'm sorry, but I have to stay in alignment. Um, 
it's it's just going to be what it is right now. We are getting new audio soon, as I mentioned. But uh, when we look at Girl with the Snake, a lot of the big shifts and changes that are happening in terms of these big breakdowns are about ending this paradigm. Ending this old social relationship that you're used to having. This is all your internal, right? Because this is your personal reading. So it's like, what's going on with you on an internal level? Your reality is breaking apart as you know it. The reality that you once experienced is falling apart. And for many of you, that reality was things like the narcissist empath paradigm. It was moments and situations where you had to uh, self-protect, where you had to en enable boundaries, where you had to be on guard, and the way you related yourself to the outside world. Now, this can show up in many different relationships. This could have been your family. It could have been uh, love. It could have any any relationship dynamics. But really what they were doing is they were reflecting what was going on inside of you, the ways in which you allowed yourself to be used and taken advantage of and kind of, again, a martyr in a lot of different ways because of the ways in which you could not see and value yourself versus this time around, this is all about you pouring great amounts of self-love and nurturing into you. And this is what's causing the big breakdown of the world that you once knew, which is moving you into a space where we've got this friendship feeling uplifted and all of the above. So this is interesting because, like I said, we see you going going from here to here into this energy, right? You're seeing through your new beginning, you're carrying the wands into the future for what it is that you want, but it's not an easy feeling. To go from the girl with the snake into the coffee cup, I mean, you're going from a space where you you have to enable boundaries and you have to be on guard, where things were darker in the past and they're lighter now in the future. That energy within itself can feel like a burden, carrying you to the other side of what it is that you need. Just a lot of internal shifts. We see this uh, going on in your shadow, right? We've got uh, the death in terms of what you are kind of afraid of in your shadow, right? Uh, the world, and this is the four of pentacles here. So in so many ways, you're afraid of change. You're afraid of the end of cycles. And you're afraid of it putting you in a space where you have to self-preserve, self-protect, and are existing in scarcity. There's so much going on when it comes to this energy of here you are being forced into great change and having to see through the end of that. But you're afraid of this very same shift. There's a nervousness. There's a, um, like, is the ground going to be ripped from underneath me? Where is this really going to take me? What is really going to happen? What is it that I'm really going to do? We've got major arcanas going on here in your shadow. Those are deep fears of endings, right? These endings with the world and the, and the death. What are you so afraid of ending? More than likely, it's probably something good, right? Let's get some clarity. At the bottom of um, the advice deck, we've got relax the hold of darkness and be at cause. And for you, you're relaxing the hold as you're seeing yourself for who it is that you truly are. Trusting in your instincts, right? As you break up with an old reality. interesting because your healing points and your advice are, are so beautiful. Endings bring new beginnings, right? This Things fall apart so they can come back together in a better way. You're unearthing a lot about yourself, but you're terrified of change. You're terrified of change. You're terrified of moving into a space where you're a little bit more uplifted. But again, we're looking deeper into what it is that you fear, right? So, I'm trying to shuffle the cards away from the current sound pickup. Okay. 
Okay, we've got two that want to be seen here. Wow, all right. So what is it that you fear? We go back into this energy of the pentacles. This is here with the, uh, the six of swords. So this is interesting and in that I wanted to make sure that you can see that. Oh, you know, it's funny. The background is, is in focus. Well, um, but yeah, we've got this nine of pentacles, right? This instability and the six of swords in reverse, not being afraid to heal. Not being able to, to heal from some kind of pain. Fruits of your labor, it's time to reap the fruits of your labor and become rich. Rich gain is here. Almost as if everything you've done has gone in vain. Beware of love affairs at work. They hardly work well. Don't lose your mind. Yeah, we go into this, go back into the space of like, what does it mean to step out of a space where you are kind of more self-protected and moving into a space where you're allowing people in more? And that being a major point of fear in that sense. Stepping into a space where you can be taken advantage of. You don't want to be taken advantage of. Almost in a way where you don't want to be vulnerable when it comes to connections and dynamics. You don't want your hard work to go in vain as we discussed. And you're afraid that you'll be put in a space of instability. But not just any kind of instability, a lack of stability when it comes to your own independence. And that you won't be able to heal from whatever wounds take place when you step out of this energy. But a lot of this has to do with you not seeing yourself clearly, like we said. That which you fear is inevitably on its way because we've got a tower here. The tower is governing your, your life throughout the month of June. And it's happening in this beautiful way, like we said, with the Queen of Pentacles, right? It's like, it's just lovely energy. But I can't ignore the fact that we do have the Ten of Wands here. Let's get some clarity on the Ten of Wands. What are you carrying? In so many ways, it feels like you're carrying the burden of having to move toward a new future. When where you are more open, you're accepting your reality as it now is versus how it once was in the past. Stepping out of hermit mode in a lot of ways. Stepping into an openness. You don't want to be taken advantage of at this time you won't. What's going on this time around? of swords clarity awareness what are you carrying with this ten of wands the king of swords wow okay so <laughs> we've got more going on with the swords energy so the tower brings about a new awareness lots of new awareness uh, I was going to say new awareness but lots of clarity in terms of what is to be it also might be communication. Whatever is going to come out of these clouds, whatever is going to become realized to you is going to change your life exponentially as you know it. There is, a, and it, again, for many of you, it could be you cutting through the clouds yourself and kind of reintroducing yourself to the world. Because we've got this going on, and, and I am going to read these for you when it comes to critical acclaim. Understanding yourself as more of a public entity, more of a social being in that sense. Understanding that once what once fell apart, fell apart so things could come back together. And things are coming back together. Things are coming back together. And again, we've got the coffee cup here when conversing and conversation... With this being some kind of burden that you're moving forward with the King of Swords. Discernment, clarity. The tower opens you to clarity, opens you to conversation, opens you to new awareness. And the King of Swords is the burden that you carry moving forward. 
which is what you will do with this newfound awareness, how you will control your emotions, how you will navigate the situation, how you will use your wisdom to uh, progress forward. And it's as if being the king in this case is like being heavy wearing the crown, right? As they say, the king, uh, when the one who wears the crown has the heaviest, uh, has a heavy head, I think is what it is that they're saying. And that's kind of going along here with this Ten of Wands energy. This newfound awareness that's going to shake your ground is going to make you hyper aware a decision maker. I don't mean this by gender when I say a man of clarity, a man of thought, a man of awareness. Having to move forward with this newfound awareness, getting on top of how you feel in that way. It goes back to me putting it back into the space in terms of what it is that you fear, which is instability, independent instability, being put in a space of scarcity. Again, the death with the world, which is great. Both together are great endings, but also new beginnings, progression forward, movements forward, change. The feeling like you're going to be taken advantage of or taken for granted and you won't be able to heal because if you're going to walk right into something that's going to hurt you. I'm going to read, um, I'm going to read these two for you guys. Actually, I don't have the book with me. Hold on one second. Top healing point here is an air energy for me. A way through this struggle has already been created for you, and you are being led onto that path. Your authentic soul path may include recognition, acclaim, notable success, and admiration. Be grateful, but do not be dazzled or distracted by such experiences. Focus on what connects you to your heart and grounds you in the simplicity of your spiritual truth which is the practice of love, kindness, and peace. This will allow for successful progress in the material world without disturbing the sanctity of your soul, right? So then we go from there into mandala. And mandala is earth. So this is interesting because we're going into a space where we see this, um, this kind of relationship, right? When it comes to air and it's going back into the queen of pentacles for the theme for the month in terms of earth, right? So much happening when it comes to your mind and this clarity that you're coming through or that's bringing, brought, being brought through you, there's a way through uh, whatever it is that you fear, whatever burdens that are going on and the way through is through you kind of stepping into this space where you're allowing yourself to, I guess, be seen, be admired, be loved. Be, be, you're seeing yourself clearly, but as you see yourself clearly, it's other people seeing you clearly. It's like having to step out into the limelight in a way. Uh, asking other people to help you, asking other people to assist you, stepping out. Because the thing about this narcissist paradigm, any kind of paradigm where you have to enable boundaries, a lot of that comes from isolation. You tend to attract some of the worst characters when you put yourself in a space of burden. And even though we've got the Ten of Wands here, we've got the Tower here, this is the subject. It's not to say it's your advice. It's not to say uh, inevitably... Uh, where your head needs to be. It's just what's happening, right? What is happening is you're in this queen of pentacles energy. And what is happening is great towers are taking place. Huge changes are taking place, right? That are bringing forth a lot of clarity, right? Cutting through the clouds. 
And like I said, this energy does not feel negative in any way. It just feels like huge, great changes, big shifts are taking place. A lots of clarity is coming to you. Lots of communication is coming to you. Newfound, newfound awareness is coming to you. Uh, and then we go here with the Ten of Wands in terms of what is actually going on is you are carrying these wands into your next chapter, right? Moving through these burdens. And this is you with, the, again, heavy wears the crown, right? The way in which you have this newfound awareness, what is moving through you. And it's stepping out of this space of being this uh, the person that needs to enable these boundaries, right? Like connecting with these kind of darker energies, but moving into a space where things are more uplifted and more people are talking to you, assisting you, communicating with you, helping you, navigating you. You heal here. This is the, the advice in terms of this energy. It's like, see yourself clearly and allow yourself to be seen. So you can step out of what you fear because what you fear is going on. It's like you're, you're afraid of not healing. You're afraid of not being able to stand on your own two feet. You're afraid of being in some kind of scarcity. You're afraid of uh, scary endings, bringing about new cycles. It's like all of these things that you fear, all of this kind of nervousness that you have, the answers are right here and they feel very light. There's a lot that you do not know. Allow them to be exposed to you. Allow those things that you do not know to be uh, realized and kind of given to you with Pandora's gift. Mandala of the heart, uh, like I said, we've got air here and we've got earth grounding it. Sometimes aspects of your life fall apart or don't go to plan so that they can come back together in a beautiful way. Uh, trust in the goodness and the inevitable blessing of your destiny falling into place. Do not trust your fears, especially for this month. Do not trust your fears. Your death is in your fears. You know, death along with the world. You know, what will, I mean, death is a pretty big fear. Yes, <laughs> death is a, is a really big fear. It's like a, the end of something great is what you fear the most. And so it's stepping out of that. Uh, put your faith and love in your heart, a heart for which is going to manifest. And that wish manifests as you connect more with others. Seeing yourself more clearly and understanding that you don't deserve whatever this this great finish is that you fear. Right? Allow things to be revealed to you. See the fact that you are admired, you are loved, you are valued here. And things happen the way that they have up until this point so that they can work out more seamlessly now. Where are you looking at when it comes to your resources, how you're connecting with other people? A lot of the, again, we go back to the space of like a lot of the times that you have connected with the wrong types of characters or the wrong uh, kind of situations or when you've had to deal with moments where you've had to enable your boundaries, self-isolate, etc. A lot of that had to do with the fact that you were in the wrong place in the first place. How are you lowballing yourself? or uh, disconnecting or kind of, again, uh, self-isolating because you felt like you were undeserving of some kind of assistance or that you um, could not trust in the situation. If you feel like you cannot trust and you attract who you cannot trust. If you feel like you are untrustworthy, the same thing goes. If you feel like you do not have the value or the worth, then you are not looking at your resources. You are not looking outside of yourself to expand on what it is that you deserve that comes back into you. This is the energy that shifts because this is what's going on with you, right? The, the tower is bringing about great clarity, big changes, big, big new revelations. And again, heavy is the king that wears the crown as you push forward. But you do so by stepping out of this space where you have to enable boundaries because you're attracting the wrong things to you because of how you've kind of been going about things in a way where you haven't been coming from a space of self-nurturing. So now as you move into a space of self-nurturing, you can be more uplifted in the sense of you are connecting more with others, right? Having a more uplifted uh, energy where you're allowing people in. My goodness. <laughs> Where do we find that, right? This air energy. You're okay. You're more than okay here. Trust your instincts. What is it that you want us to know?
You are loving on yourself big time. Big time. What is it that you want to see? What do you feel? And I can't help but see that relax the hold of darkness and be a cause at the end of the advice deck. It's like let go of the fears. When you see yourself clearly, you realize you don't have anything to fear. It was all the way you were perceiving yourself inaccurately before. The way you were misjudging yourself, mischaracterizing, characterizing yourself. What is it that you want us to feel? Oh yeah, double confirmation on that three of swords. In terms of what it is that you want us to know. So the three of swords again is all about, and we saw that at the bottom of the other of the crow deck. This is the three of swords breaking up with something, ending something. separating from something and it's not to say this three of swords again has to be some kind of painful ending this breakup can be in your hands the three of swords is also about healing as well how is it that you want us to feel as a chariot triumphant and that you're getting through this that you can get through this and end up on the other side end up on top but again something is separating something is breaking down you're breaking up with something someone and do is the nine of pentacles which is take yourself step by step into what it is that you want carve your foundation out of stone step forward toward your new beginning so I said this breakup is in your hands It's also addressing it as well. And the two of wands came out again. Is it in your hands, yes or no? Is it about healing? No, it's not about healing. Yes, but it is in your hands. Interesting. So when we ask if it's about healing or not, we've got the sun in reverse, right? And is it in your hands? We've got the ten of pentacles very loudly. <laughs> That's a very beautiful yes. So you are cutting the sword. You are wielding these three swords and putting an end to something that no longer serves you. Like we saw at the bottom of the crow deck. This, this three of swords is your empowerment. How things fall apart in order to come back together. Better. This ending, this separation, this disconnection. Sorry about that, guys camera stopped but it's in your hands and it's also kind of, it's in your hands in a way where it brings about a new sense of abundance as well you're feeling very empowered with it as you put an end to what once hurt and it's interesting because when we see that it's not that it's not about healing it's about you literally putting an end to something separating from something breaking up with something or a series of things because as we look at the fact that you need to see yourself more clearly, you're breaking up with an entire old identity that could look like, you know, a divorce. It could look like uh, separating from someone that no longer serves you. But all in all, regardless of or ending a, a position, whatever that might be, 
because you have this newfound clarity, right? With the tower, big changes. At the end of the day, this three of swords is a part of what's this navigation in terms of big, huge changes happening in your life inevitably as you're loving on and nurturing yourself more and you're happily willing to take these wands and take them to the next step as you are the king wearing the crown, right? You're moving out of this space that you have to enable boundaries and into a space where you're feeling more uplifted. Opening yourself to communication and awareness. Yeah, and you fear what it is that you're putting in a great end to, but you're seeing yourself more clearly. The advice here is to see yourself more clearly as you awaken to what it is that's been hidden to you. You are the star. You are the star here. There's no variety and no notability here. The world is opening up for you more than it has in the past as you wield this sword and put an end to things so that they can come back together better. And you got you come into a space of great empowerment with the ten of uh, ten of pentacles, also in terms of what you need to feel with the chariot. So putting an end to things puts you in a much more abundant and happy space. For some of you, this could be ending family dynamics as well. When we look at things like the ten of pentacles, um, for some of you, this can be subconscious, right? So uh, ending what it is that family means to you in your own self. Like I said, it, it, the combination of it, whatever's happening on the outside is uh, a reflection of what's, hap what's happening on the internal, especially because this is a personal reading. So these breakups that you're doing, these breakups that you're wielding, these swords that you are um, swinging around as you increase your self-worth and your self-value, these things are happening the way that they are so that um, you can see through your new beginning, right? It's piece by piece creating these foundations made out of stone because you have to see yourself more clearly. So I like this. I like this energy a lot. It's, it's complicated. It is. It's complex, right? It's like, you know, you say you love you and what comes from you loving you is a whole lot of things that might look a little messy to some, right? A little chaotic to some. But it's powerful. So yeah. So that is your reading, Capricorn. I love you. Ciao.